uh, one woman uh, put aside um, this whole, uh, I guess, beauty queen dream of hers for almost three decades, uh, doing other things before she decided to get back up on stage and fit into the gown. I can't wait to hear her story. In fact, she's gone on to win a global title. Her name is Angela Lee Pickard, and she is the new Mrs. Classic Globe. It's a beauty competition for married women who are age 45 and above. She's the first Singaporean to win the pageant. She's my guest on the Double X Files. Hello, Angela. Congratulations, Mrs. Classic Globe. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. Yes, hi. I am Mrs. The new Mrs. Classic Globe 2022. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Are you here in Singapore or are you still in the United States where the competition I'm, was? I'm back. I'm back. And uh, yeah, and a little bit jet lag, but definitely back. Well, well you, look, you look very fresh. You look very inspired. 28 years uh, between all the titles that you'd won in the past. You represented Singapore at the Miss World Finals in South Africa. You were finalist in Miss Universe Singapore competition as well. What made you want to work out, get back into that gown and uh, get back on stage and stand tall? So back in 2018, um, my elder daughter, Maitia Lu, she participated in the Miss Universe Singapore pageant. And, you know, being the supportive mom, you know, attending all her events and the finals, it lit a inspiration in me to get back on the stage and to do what I meant, what I meant to do, which is pageantry. This is my forte. This is something I love to do and very passionate about. Angela, tell us about this mother-daughter connection because I was just reading about you and I saw a photo of you next to your beautiful mom uh, when you won many years ago. And then here you are supporting your daughter. So it's a bit of a tradition in your family, is it? Yes, so my mom was a model herself um, back in the heydays and um, she has always inspired me, you know, with modeling and she brought me to my first pageant when I was 12 years old in 1986 um, at the um, Mrs. Singapore uh, Coronation Night and, you know, that that kind of gave me that fire to really want to be a beauty queen um, to represent Singapore as an ambassador worldwide. And uh, yeah, she has supported me throughout my pageant journey um, from Miss World, Miss Universe to the local classic Mrs. Globe. This is Mrs. Singapore pageant, and she even flew to America, Palm Springs, to um, see me and support me in the uh, Mrs. Classic Globe pageant. So, How nice. How old yeah. is mom now? Mom, she's 75 now. Oh, hi, mom. Oh, so yeah. nice. So, so yeah. nice. Oh, it would be and, fascinating and, to hear her modeling stories Yeah, <laughs> from the heyday. So from hearing her stories, that inspired me and, you know, uh, myself, I always shared my pageant journey with my children, both daughters, and, you know, they naturally loved it and was inclined to want to, you know, experience it as well. So both my daughters, Maitia Lu participated in 2018 and Caitlin Lu, she actually participated last year and they were both finalists, which I'm very, very proud of. Yeah, oh, wow. So this begs the question, these two young women uh, go into, uh, I guess, the new version of Miss Universe, so different from when you were participating. And it was them who actually made you realize, hey, I think I can do this again. They must have taught you a thing or two about getting back on stage, uh, being in the beauty pageant for today, because I don't think the question is just about how do you achieve world peace now, right? True, true, very true. So, yes, my daughters have taught me a few tricks here and there. Um, yeah, just watching and uh, seeing how they have grown through pageantry, just visualizing it, it has also taught me in that manner. Um, I love where pageantry is going today, you know. I wish that, you know, in the local Singapore scene that pageantry was had more support from, you know, people and from sponsors because it is a wonderful way to celebrate women from all diversity, all cultures, very inclusive platform. And yeah, so my aim, my, you know, desire is to be that spokesperson for women and also for married women and yeah, to see pageantry back in the limelight. <laughs> well, 
um, I'm glad you've gotten your dream to come this far, which is just brilliant. It's interesting you use the word inclusive when it comes to this world of pageantry. There's talk of it being actually quite derogatory. What do you think of that? I, I mean, I'm biracial myself, you know, being half um, English, British, and half um, Chinese. So to me, inclusive is a super word. It's a powerful word because we are including everyone, women from all ages, from all cultures, from all cult uh, countries. And, you know, all shapes and sizes, I think it is a powerful word. Yeah. All right. Um... Uh, how what do you what made you actually stand out you think because i was looking at the field uh, as well you had uh, a representative from china east asia france uh the united states were uh, uh represented in different states oh that was kind of interesting there was uh, miss missouri um what was there miss philippines as well miss texas nice to meet all these women and yes, what made you stand I, out, they, you think, Angela? They what are all did it for my you? Friends. Yeah, they're definitely all my friends. I love them all. We had the best fun, most laughter. Um, but I feel that probably my personality, my charismatic nature, and also my stage presence, because being a model myself for so many years, I I was able to, you know, do my sassy and do do great on the catwalk so that is something it's a bonus to me a plus point i i, I reckon yeah mm. and there's a mrs ukraine as well uh in yeah. the lineup um yeah. must have been an interesting maybe slightly political twist you think to that honestly in the mrs uh, globe pageant there's no politics involved mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. it's more about hearing every woman's stories and how they want to inspire, you know, nurture and, you know, help other women to be better, to to step off that block and, you know, to run their best race. So honestly, there was no political motivation whatsoever behind pageantry there. Yeah. Did, did, she get, did she get more applause though than other people? Uh, no, no, actually. We were all treated equally the same. That's what I loved about it, being there in the Mrs. Globe platform. It felt like a celebration of women, married women, you know, older women, younger women who are, you know, just being truly themselves and just like a huge slumber party. It was amazing. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed my week there, really. Yeah. All right. Um, as Miss World Singapore, how do you think you made a difference here in Singapore? As Miss World Singapore, I think that, you know, I was very young. I was a, a young queen at 20. Um, my biracial uh, heritage, um, parentage did um, make a difference. Um, a lot of um, beauty queens nowadays, um, you know, we are inclusive and we we represent many different cultures. And yeah, I think just by my own representation of being biracial was a stepping stone in uh, pageantry. And um, yeah, I, I feel that I, I did make an impact, but I think now, as uh, Mrs. Classic Globe, I have made a greater impact um, in Singapore, yes. Okay, that's great. Um, so what do you have lined up now that you've won? Um, here in Singapore, any engagements, anything significant uh, uh, as a result of that new title of yours? Well, I, I will continue my advocacy for sure. Um, things that are very important to me, very close to my heart from protein C deficiency survivors, from circular fashion, from also um, helping women to be confidently beautiful, especially um, women my age group, 45 and above, who struggle with a lot of body image issues. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel to inspire and help, you know, with little tips and um, my own personal journey. And also as a win, um, Women in Need um, ambassador, I also will help to raise awareness to that cause. It is a platform where they help, um, you know, uh, women who have survived abused, abusive relationships to, you know, regain their life again. And also as a model, I am 100% wanting to inspire our local modeling um, scene to include 
more mature women. Yeah. Orioles. Oh, that's gorgeous. You know what? Yeah. Um, hang in there because I want to. I want to come back uh, after the little break, Angela, to talk about your protein C story and also about the world of mature models. I know you're the perfect person to talk about these issues with. So please stay with us, Mrs. Classic Globe, Angela Lee Pickard, my guest on the Double X Files. <laughs> Let me go a quick look on the roads right now. Obstacle. Her stories on CNA 938. So my guest today is an advocate and also a beauty queen, and she uses, uh, you know, her, her popularity for good gain. Mrs. Classic Globe, she just won this title. Angela Lee Pickard uh, is here with us. Hi again, Angela. Hi, hi. So, protein C deficiency, that's what you have, and you actually wrote about it and spoke about it over at Mrs. Classy Globe. Yes, I, I did. So, um, I, I have a rare genetic blood disorder, which is called protein C deficiency, and it causes um, blood clots in my body. So, it's something I was born with, and um, yeah, I, I did have a near-death experience 10 years ago. I suffered a pulmonary embolism to my left lung. It was quite a serious clot. I mean, a third of my lung was, you know, clotted with blood, and it took it took a while to to regain my health. And yeah, and I'm using my story to inspire other survivors that you know, no matter the circumstance, you know, if you really want something in life and you really want to achieve something, go for it because you know we are blessed with this life and it is it is a treasure. So you know, use it to the fullest potential and I'm using this lifetime of mine to advocate the causes that are very, very dear to my heart. Yeah. Can, can you get scanned for protein C deficiency or is it something um, that has to be a detrimental you know, effect on you before you realize, hey, I have it? So you can do a blood test um, to, to check if you have this genetic disposition. I did... I didn't know about it until after I had the embolism. It is a genetic trait from my mother, my maternal, my mother's family tree. So yes, it, you can test for it and my siblings have tested for it. It is, um, you know, a 50-50 a chance of um, you getting it if your parent has it mm. and vice versa for my girls. So my girls will get tested in time. Um, I, I cross my fingers and hope they do not have it. But if they have it, you can monitor it. You can make lifestyle changes to improve your, you know, your lifespan. All so right. that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's also talk about uh, mature models. Um, wow. You know, I was recently on a family vacation to Kuala Lumpur. We were in the mall and there were so many billboards up. And then my mom made a comment. Hey. Everybody's got white hair, these models. And I'm like, yeah, mom, this is a new thing, you know? You have Elon's mother, Mae Musk, who's such yes. a top model these days. I mean, gracing the, the covers of amazing magazines uh, here locally as well, some notable mature models. Uh, would you consider one, yourself one of them? And, 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 and what are you doing to make this a thing for women here? So I love Mae Musk. I follow her on Instagram. She's definitely an inspiration for me. Um, however, I feel, you know, it's either you're really old or you are really young. There's no there's no coverage or editorials for the in-betweens, you know, like women like me who do not look as mature as our age reflect. But we are mature women nonetheless. So I, you know, I, I would love for, you know, the, the editorials and for magazines to include all ages and all different types of women through the aging process, not just, you know, white hair. I mean, we can have black hair too, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. And a few, a few more wrinkles, but you know. So what? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then um, sustainability in fashion is also something big for you. I mean, you hashtag yourself as a lover of vintage fashion. Yeah. And earlier this hour and also earlier in the show, we had talked to a lot of younger people who were bringing on, you know, uh, slow fashion fabric uh, that, you know, you don't expect to use and all that. Are you a supporter of all this? And, and do you see this as the new wave of fashion? 100%, 100%. So 
know, when I was growing up, I always had my hand-me-downs from my mom's, mm-hmm. from her, you know, all her vintage outfits, you know. And I've always loved vintage bags, and I've collected vintage Chanel since, like, 20 over years ago. So vintage is very, uh, is, is something I really love, you know, not just in fashion, but also in furniture and in antiques and stuff like that. But, yeah, circular fashion recently being made aware of, you know, climate change and um, how how we can make a difference to it, you know, because I feel that the next generation, my children, um, they are concerned about climate change. And as parents, we have to do something, make a stand, because, you know, the little things that we do does add up and does make a difference. And we want to leave this world to the, our children, our grandchildren, you know, something that is fruitful, that that they can enjoy like we did, you know, and not worry about, you know, all the natural disasters and and stuff like that. So, yes, um, circular fashion is the way to go. It's it's the the way of the future. Um, That way, by recycling, reusing, um, you know, we are able to lower our consumption and also, um, you know, towards reducing the landfills that are really filling up this... um, earth today you know with all that rubbish so yes i am uh proactive in it i actually even um set up my own online store to inspire um this this movement yeah and i hope Mm -hmm. that you know in singapore it it will slowly gravitate towards this um new way of shopping yeah Yeah. true well we've got to work together then angela to get the word Uh out um but honestly mm, i think the future is just so bright for you thank you for talking to us today and congratulations once again yeah thank you yeah, Mrs. Uh, Singapore is Mrs. Classic Globe. I love this. Angela Lee Pickard, my guest on the Double X Files. Take care. Take care. Bye. Hi. My name is Yasmin Yonkers. More on the Double X Files. Justine Moss will take over for the next few days.